Hi, I'm John, the anti-poverty engineer. And uh, yesterday I posted, or the day before, Davos censors four Termel answers. I had posted four answers to Davos on their four big questions. And uh, then the next day I posted them again, and they didn't show up. And the next day I posted them again, and they didn't show up. And then I complained about it. And so today, the t post is called Davos Uncensors Termel's Four Answers. So today, now that the forum is closed, you can find at the environment, da -da -da -da, John Termel's answer, last one on the page. And when you go over to the ethics, there it is, John Termel's last one on the page. And when you go to the politics on Obama, yes sir, last one on the page. And finally the economy, where I had my original one posted five days ago, and then my other one four days ago, there it is. John the Engineer to Davos and Belém five days ago, and Davos Economy question four days ago, but they didn't post it four days ago, they just tell people they dated it four days ago. It only got posted today, after the forum closed. So the world's leaders weren't faced with what about resolution c6 to the united at the united nations on the millennium declaration putin you were there you saw the declaration i mean uh, chavez was there if you look at the picture of the world leaders in 2000 many were there so resolution c6 to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency they never had to answer the question at davos so then they got a year to think about it before the next Davos, will be when they'll be faced with, are you in favor of restructuring the global financial architecture with a time-based currency that empowers humanity with the same credit as a piece of yellow rock? And if they say yes, we're saved. But by now, till then, there's a case lab of a hundred million people, probably, who are going to die from poverty-related diseases who wouldn't die if they'd done it at Davos this year. Check out Case Lab on the internet. You'll find my analysis explaining why delay costs lives. So this is an article from about Davos and the lack of any solution that we're going to be talking about now. Gloom, perplexity, divisions dominate World Economic Forum in Davos. 31st of January 2009 by the World Socialist website. Somebody wrote a report, www.wswf.org. So, by Barry Gray. Some 2,500 representatives of the world's business and political elite, including 41 heads of government and scores of cabinet ministers, are attending the annual World Economic Forum, which opened Wednesday in the Swiss Alpine Resort of Davos. This year's forum, taking place in the midst of global financial meltdown and economic slump that have shattered the complacent verities of the superiority of the free enterprise system, presents a picture of deep crisis and disarray among the leaders of world capitalism. The mood that prevails, according to all accounts, is one of gloom and foreboding. While it is generally acknowledged by the participants that they confront the most serious economic crisis since the Great Depression, the speeches and discussions have underscored the lack of any agreement on the basic causes of the crisis or any unified conception as to how it should be addressed. So nobody has any idea why debts got so big. You know, what makes debts big? Think about it some more. And of course, I did present some ideas, the time standard of money and the unilets on how it should be addressed. But then I'm the world's most unelected politician, and here's 41 of the world's most elected politicians. So, ah, oh, but then again, in Canada, I made the government drop the charges against 4,000 people for marijuana possession charges because I was the only person in the country who knew the law had been invalidated and had taken effect, and all the lawyers and all the judges for two years kept busting and convicting people and giving them bogus records. 100,000 mistakes, all of them wrong. I was the only person right, and I eventually won. So, John the Engineer being right, and the whole world's worth of lawyers and economists being wrong, would be nothing new in politicians. The Washington Post quoted media baron Rupert Murdoch as saying the participants were depressed and traumatized. 
adding that 50 trillion of personal wealth had vanished since the crisis worsened last September with the collapse of the U.S. investment bank Lehman Brothers. 50 trillion disappeared down the bank drains and the only person who knows how to reprogram the computer and get everybody their money back, including the poor, is me. The Post went on to quote the billionaire hedge fund manager George Soros, who said the size of the problem confronting us today is larger than in the 1930s. Oh, by the way, George Soros financed Terry Parker's case proving that marijuana was great medicine for epilepsy, which won. And then he didn't finance going to win the pot. I had to do that, and I got credit for getting the 4,000 charges knocked, and it could have been George Soros. <laughs> the World Economic Forum was first launched by its founder and still president, the Swiss economist and businessman Klaus Schwab, in 1971 in the midst of a mounting financial crisis that led in August of that year to the collapse of the Bretton Woods system, the international monetary framework based on U.S. dollar and gold convertibility. Ah, the link to Yellow Rock that had undergirded the post-war economic expansion. In the ensuing years, the forum developed into a semi-official gathering of business chiefs and government officials that this who discussed and debated both international economic and political issues. The biggest mistake in the whole English language is when you're talking about people, you say who. You don't say people that went there, and it's an incredible mistake. Everybody makes it in the United States. In the more recent period since the collapse of the Soviet Union, it's become a venue to affirm the supposed triumph of the free enterprise system, with American investment bankers holding court, surrounded by a small army of economists and media, complemented by film stars and other celebrities, all failing to come up with the answer. One year ago, after the initial collapse of the U.S. housing market and eruption of the credit crisis, concern at the forum over these were some developments, which had been almost universally unanticipated, was tempered by assurances from American bankers and politicians that the disorder would be quickly resolved and that, in the worst-case scenario, a U.S. recession would be mild and brief. Most of the discussion centered on the widely held notion that the problems in the U.S. financial markets would not spread to Europe or Asia due to the phenomenon of decoupling. Ah, yes, economists. Robert Greenhill, a forum's chief business officer, set the tone of this year's forum by declaring the meeting was founded at a time of division and uncertainty in the 1970s, and this year is a return to its roots. Yeah, you're all screwed up and none of you know what to do again. Put, people are coming to compare notes on what they need to do to emerge from a serious crisis, and with all those notes, nobody came up with I equals zero. Just how serious and universal a crisis was underscored on the opening day of the forum by the International Monetary Fund's downwardly revised estimate of world economic growth for 2009 of a mere half a percent. Oh gosh, growth is down. We need growth. Of what? Well, growth of debt. Because you have to get into debt to get money, and for more money we need more debt. So these guys are cheering for growth of debt, and they want you to cheer with them including major contractions in the U.S., Britain, France, Germany, and Japan. That followed the previous week's IMF forecast that world trade volumes would shrink 2.8% in 2009. Also, on Wednesday, the International Labor Organization warned that some 51 million jobs could be lost worldwide this year. 51 million jobs worth of paychecks. They always see jobs when it's paychecks. If you can think in terms of paychecks, not jobs, you'll understand we're losing our job. You're losing your paychecks. So, people don't want jobs, they want paychecks. Like Ryan Kowat said, you want more jobs, take out a bulldozer, put in 50 guys with shovels. You want more jobs, take away their shovels, give them spoons. The two dominant and interrelated features of this year's forum are a general sense of shock and near panic over the inexorable and rapid manner in which the crisis has overtaken the efforts of central banks and governments to shore up the banks and revive economic activity. Geez, they... Every American citizen gave their bankers 3000 bucks. That's what the $850 billion is, right? Nice little gift, 3000 each to the banks. Amounting to trillions in loans, that's just the first trillion, right? Guarantees and cash infusions, and the devastating loss of American prestige and credibility. The Financial Times on Wednesday wrote, most notably, faith that a mix of globalization, financial innovation, and free market competition would build a better financial system had withered away. Well, actually, they haven't heard of Unilets yet. As bank losses have piled up, thus the critical question that now hangs over this year's meeting at Davos is, what, if anything, can replace this creed? 
Well, Resolution C6, the government in the Millennium Declaration at the United Nations, which says use a time-based currency to restructure the global financial architecture. You got six billion human engines out there capable of putting in useful time, and that should be valid as collateral for a new currency at a time bank. The Unilats Time Bank. Among similar lines, the New York Times on Friday quoted James Rosenfeld, co-founder of Cambridge Energy Research Associates, as saying, we've all been building this big integrated financial system. We didn't consider what would happen when it dis disintegrated. Well, reboot, but not with the same bad software. He used Let's. As for the position of the United States, the opening day of the forum was given over to Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao and Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin, both of whom lambasted the U.S. without directly naming the target of the attacks for participating in the world crisis and calling for measures to lessen U.S. dominance on world financial markets. Well, just run your own markets, create your own currency, and your dominance disappears. What do you mean lessen? Talk about aiming low. You could get rid of it. 